Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and in this video we are going to be comparing an air cooler against a similarly priced AIO. Uh, now this is the Thermal Pri um this is the Thermalrite Frozen Prism 360. It comes in at $55, 55 US dollars, and it is the cheapest AIO, well 360 millimeter AIO that I can find on PC Perfect. And we're going to be comparing that to the Thermalrite Phantom Spirit Evo. This is a, well, I would call it a high-end air cooler at a mid-range price. So this comes in at 50 bucks. So we're looking at a $5 difference. So before we get into comparing the performance of the two coolers, let's just talk about some of the positives and negatives of each one. When it comes to the air cooler in general, they don't perform as well as uh, water coolers. Uh, but on the flip side, they are more reliable. You have two fans, one of those breaks, it's really easy to replace. And then the actual um, cooling liquid inside it, it's enclosed, self-contained, and there's no moving parts moving it around. What happens is the CPU heats up the uh, heat plate at the bottom, the liquid turns into the gas, it floats up, gets cooled uh, by the fans at the fins, the gas turns back into a liquid, goes back down, and just repeats itself. So there's no moving parts inside moving the liquid uh, around. On the flip side, when you come to the AIO, there, again, you have the uh, the fans. They can break, but that's an easy fix. What the problem is, is inside there is a water pump, and if that water pump breaks, chances are you're going to have to throw it in the garbage and get a new one. So that can be a fairly expensive uh replacement if that does break there's also a uh, potential for water to leak out however that is very rare so those are a couple of negatives one of the main positives of having an AIO is a they tend to cool better than air coolers but on the flip side as well uh, you do not need to buy additional fans for either intake or exhaust depending on where you're going to put this uh, if you put it up at the top, you don't need additional exhaust fans because this is going to take care of that. Um, or you can put it on the front and use it as intake and you won't need to buy the additional fans for that. So you will have a little bit of cost savings there. So if you get any value out of this video, i really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, like the video. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Now comparing these two, uh, since they are a thermal right, um, the thermal right, uh, the Frozen Prism 360, actually has an older generation fan it's using older bearings whereas the Evo has the new generation of bearings in it and it has the fans do run a little bit higher at 2100 or 2150 rpms versus 1850 rpms they both come in about the same noise level so airflow comes in very similarly this is 69 cfms versus 70.4 cfm the air pressure is 2.87, so a little bit more air pressure with the Evo versus the AIO at 2.64. And like I said, this has the newer um, set of bearings on it, whereas this is the last generation. So I'm testing this on my open air test bench. It's what I've been using to test all the other um, coolers that I've tested. It's a B550 Tomahawk paired with the 5900X. Uh, and that generates about 200 watts of power, at least according to Hardware Info 64. So it's a fairly, it puts out a fairly decent amount of heat that can really give a good idea of how well these coolers are going to work. So diving into the actual performance, when it comes to the max noise level at 100% fan speed, the AIO comes in at 51.5 decibels and the Phantom Spirit Evo comes in at 46. So the Phantom Spirit Evo is quite a bit quieter, and that I believe is probably due to A, has the uh, newer bearings in the fan, but there's also two fans versus three. So the more fans you have, the more noise it is going to make. So at max power, max fan speed, the NO does come in at uh, a little bit lower for temperature, it can keep the 5900X at 74 degrees, whereas the Evo comes in at 76.1, which is still pretty close, but the wind goes to the AIO. So bringing the fan speed down to 45 decibels, the 
AIO comes in at 74.4 degrees Celsius, which is 2.1 degrees lower than the Phantom Spirit Evo at 76.5. Now, bringing the noise level down to a much more manageable 38 decibels, the Frozen Prism 360 comes in at 75.6. So, bringing, again, of course, bringing the fan speed down is going to increase the temperature, but it's still keeping it at a fairly decent uh, place at 75.6, which is still about 2.3 degrees cooler than the Phantom Prism Evo at 77.9. So, as you're dropping the... Uh, the fan speed is still able to do a better job of cooling and the gap is actually starting to widen a little bit uh, between the air cooler and the AIO. Now that is at max speed. Um, unless you're doing productivity type tasks, your CPU is not going to be running at that temperature and pulling that kind of wattage all the time or if ever, if you're not doing uh, any of those kind of workloads. If you're gaming, you're going to be dropping that workload down quite a bit and you might be pulling about 100 watts versus the 200 watts when it's under max load using Cinebench. So by turning six of the cores off, we're dropping the power draw down to about 125 watts according to Hardware Info 64. So by doing that and then increasing the fan speed back up to 100%, the AIO comes in at 68.8, whereas the Phantom Spirit Evo comes in at 69.9. So what that's leading me to believe is that the lower the, the power draw, the less of a variance you're going to see. And the higher the power draw, so if you're using something that draws a lot more power, you're going to see the air cool or the water cooler start to outpace the air cooler more and more so if i were to pair this with i'm thinking a 7900x like i have on my main system this is going to perform substantially better than the phantom spirit evo even though with the 5900x we're only looking at a two degree difference when it's um max cores and max uh fan speed now if you really try to keep that noise level down we can drop that the fan speed back down to 38 decibels. And again, with the only the six cores uh, being utilized, we're looking at 70.4 degrees Celsius with the AIO versus the 70.8 with the Phantom Spirit Evo. So we're only looking at a 0.4 degree difference. So which cooler you're gonna go with is really gonna depend on what kind of CPU you're looking to cool. Uh, if you're looking at a mid-range CPU that is 8 cores, um, not going to draw that much power, you can easily go with either one of these and pretty much end up with the same sort of performance. Again, looking at the 6 core, um, when 6 of the cores are disabled and only using 6 cores on the 15900X, there's not that big of a difference between the two CPUs, or the two, there's not that big of a difference between the two air coolers. When you start moving up into CPUs that are going to draw a lot more power, we're talking 13700, 14700, uh, 7900X, things like that. It, water coolers are going to perform a lot better than air coolers. The more heat that's being generated, these are just more efficient at pulling that heat away and cooling it versus air coolers. As well, it's also going to depend on what kind of case you have. Not all cases can fit a 360 millimeter air cooler. You can easily still go with the Phantom Spirit Evo or something similar to that and get great performance. Well, if you have any comments, please leave them down below. Let me know which one you think you would go with. I kind of prefer uh, water cooling just because it does do a better job of cooling overall. Um, I regularly game on my 7900X. I have an Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 uh, 420 and it does a fantastic job of keeping that CPU cool. The, I find they look better. Um, you can get some really neat designs on the front of the water pump and they also, it's just less fans I need to buy because it has the attached fans that I can use as the exhaust fans.